Siphon Filter Dark Mirror and its sequel, Logan's Shadow, are two games that never quite received the fanfare they deserve. Sure, they might look like home brand Metal Gear Solid games, but this pair of PSP titles are remarkable feats of third person portable gaming, with well designed stealth action gameplay that makes the most of an unconventional control scheme. It's a polish and pedigree you'd expect from first party Sony developer Ben Studio, who after a seven year release drought have finally delivered the goods with Days Gone, a zombie filled bikey simulator that's equal parts The Last of Us and Grand Theft Auto 4 The Lost in Dance. But before broken wheels and shattered skulls, Bend cut their teeth on portable perfection, producing four fantastic handheld adventures. Their return to the franchise they themselves created back in 1999, however, would prove the most obscure and underappreciated as time would pass. This comes despite their more than impressive review scores at their time of release. Fu però proprio l'esperienza su PSP a permettere al team di sta Начали мы должны его защищать от торгов. Вроде казалось бы это только добавлять. 2005's Dark Mirror in particular was lauded as the first PSP title to overcome the console's notorious lack of a second analog nub, a limitation that would have easily scared away most developers from attempting third or first person control. Achieving even a passable degree of accuracy with just the face buttons to guide you even today seems like a far-fetched and counterintuitive prospect, but Dark Mirror compensates with forgiving enemy hitboxes and remarkably tight aiming controls that, once adjusted to, make popping off headshots a breeze. Yeah, he Short and sweet levels make Dark Mirror the gold standard for portable design, catering to both quick and extended sessions of play. Ben Studio strikes this great balance between crafting levels that are satisfyingly self-contained, but also expertly paced to be played back to back. And even though Dark Mirror's levels are often painstakingly linear, there's a lot of underlying flexibility in how you can approach them activated by the creative collection of weapons and gadgets at your disposal. You have a basic taser that when held long enough will set enemies alight, a tried and true silenced pistol that can seemingly land headshots from miles away, as well as a versatile sniper rifle that comes packed with three alternate rounds in addition to its standard fire. Experimenting with these explosive, shocking and noxious rounds is awesome fun and contributes to a very goofy, almost James Bond-like vibe to your armory. It's also a great way to play around with the game's exaggerated ragdoll physics that make even this jump look realistic. Given the small screen size of the PSP and the occasionally wonky controls, the enemy physics do a great job of selling the impact of your actions. They're also just incredibly silly and prove that Bend Studio cared much more about fun gameplay than achieving anything resembling realistic death animations, and Dark Mirror is so much better for it. But you might have noticed this gameplay you've been watching in these minutes of your life that you'll never get back has been pretty action heavy for a series so entrenched in an espionage aesthetic. Well, the truth is, Siphon Filter was never really a stealth game, despite projecting this under the cover of darkness motif with dim lights around tables strewn with dossiers. The reality is that when protagonist Gabe Logan loads into a level, chances are the enemies have already been alerted to his presence and it's time to start shooting. Stealthy approaches are an option in Dark Mirror, but once you get spotted, there's no turning back. Not just that, but all opportunities to attempt an undetected run through a level are set firmly by the designers. But some levels do provide a bit more flexibility than just a binary stealth or action approach, like this later level set in a Russian mansion. You can take the obvious front entrance and steamroll through goons, or ascend the building's exterior and take out your target more covertly, until it all just descends into a shootout anyway, but it's nice to know that multiple approaches are an option. Dark Mirror's sequel, Logan's Shadow, arrived in 2007, which is probably why it's the lesser known of the two titles, despite, in my opinion, being superior. There were just too many groundbreaking games in 2007 that it's not surprising a PSP exclusive would fall well under the radar. You can barely list off 2007's best games in one breath. Call of Duty 4, Halo 3, Mass Effect, Bioshock, Super Mario Galaxy, Crisis, Portal, Team Fortress 2, The Witcher, Uncharted, Stalker, Shadow of Chernobyl, God of War 2, and of course, Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. 
Logan's shadow has a swagger and confidence right from the word go, staging a big action set piece, at least for PSP standards. Despite the familiar setting of its opening level, Logan's shadow doesn't waste any time introducing what's new this time around. Quick time events don't exactly get the blood pumping, but the much improved visuals are a plus, and the new unique swimming mechanics help separate Logan's shadow from its precursor. There's only a few levels that make full use of the mechanic, but they're without a doubt the best part of the campaign, which sadly takes a turn for the tedious in its closing missions. This is the only level in Logan's Shadow that's entirely underwater from start to finish. You do return to the same environment later on, but at that point it's just the same level with a boss fight. Regardless, it's the best part of the game. Your underwater harpoon weapons are so satisfying to use and really play well with the ragdoll physics, and the verticality of 360 degree movement makes these combat encounters the most dynamic of the entire series. It's a real shame Bend Studio didn't utilize water in each and every level to wring every last drop of potential from the feature. I mentioned the later levels of the campaign being a bit boring, and that's almost entirely because I just wanted more water levels. It just felt like a missed opportunity to not design the entire game around them. But thankfully, what is here is fantastic, and even when you're not fully submerged, some levels make use of a dynamic water system that if nothing else adds visual variety to environments and showcases Bend Studios' then mastery of the PSP hardware. Logan's Shadow also continues Dark Mirror's trend of open-ended level design. In one mission, you're imprisoned and interrogated, and can either break free via mind-numbing button mashing, or be knocked out and escape your cell by killing and stealing a key from a guard. The level eventually syncs up and plays identically from there on, but it's a nice wrinkle that adds genuine replayability and shows just how much effort Bend Studio consistently invested in these titles. And it's this kind of eye for player experience that I think separates the studio from most other developers. So after two technically impressive, critically acclaimed PSP exclusives, Bend Studio got to work on the Resistance and Uncharted series respectively, those games continuing to showcase their talent and expertise on Sony's portable systems, and almost single-handedly saving the PlayStation Vita at launch with a desperately needed killer app in the form of Uncharted Golden Abyss. And after releasing a $5 Uncharted themed card game in 2012, Bend Studio would batten down the hatches for the next seven years until the 2019 release of Days Gone, their first console title since 2004. This is me drinking tea in China in 2005, and this is me now. That's just how long it's taken for Bend Studio to return to home consoles, and might I say, it's a pleasure to have them back. But thank you so much for tuning into Game Brain and do all those things you need to if you want to stay tuned to my future content, you know what they are. And also let me know in the comments below what underrated game you think deserves more love. I'd love to hear from you and I'll see you next time.